right now during these indoor days when it's so cold outside, we're always looking for ways to keep our kids entertained. And today's guest is doing just that through combining creativity and culture with a painting technique that anybody can do. So you don't need a lot of supplies, just some simple household items and your imagination. Emily Hammerstad is here to show us some fun ways to paint using everyday utensils. Hi, Emily. Hello. Thanks for being here. Look at these earrings. We got like these fun bubble gum. Did you make those? No, I oh, wish. I wish she did too. She could teach us. Okay, so we're talking about this project that is so ingenuitive, and you say it's just creat creativity. You get to use your creativity with yes, this one. Yes, yes. I love when you just push the creative side of your thoughts, because then it doesn't focus on the end goal, it just focuses on enjoying the journey. Yeah, being creative is so fun, and I like kind of the theme you've picked. You're doing Chinese New Year. Yes. Which, that might be, some, I'm one of those moms who does kind of decorate for every holiday. I haven't dipped into Chinese New Year. <laughs> so tell me why, what drew you to that, and tell us a little bit more about it. Um, I feel like January is kind of a difficult time. It just, there's nothing to really celebrate, nothing to get excited for, but Chinese New Year can get you something that you're getting pumped up for. The hard part is, that it changes every year. I didn't know this. This year it's actually on February 10th, but it can be anywhere from like February or January 20th to sometime at the end of February. And is it by the moons? Yes. Okay, okay, so that's why. So when is it t this year? February 10th. February 10th, so this is something we can plan ahead and maybe do with our kids. And you brought an apprentice with you today. Yes. Artist apprentice. Come on in, this is my son Eli. <laughs> Hi, Eva, because this is a really fun thing we can do with kids. Yes, and kids are really great to have with you because they help you just feel a little bit more creative because you can follow their willingness to just get messy and have fun. Okay, Eli, are you creative? Yes. Yes, okay, how old are you? Ten. Ten, okay. And I guess you know what we're going to do today. Do you feel like this could be easy for any age kid? Uh, yes. Yes, okay, we're going to jump in. We're going to jump in with using a fork we can create a panda with just a fork. Yes. Okay, show us. So let's, let's get our aprons, aprons on first. Okay, which one's mine? Oh, black for you. Black for me, okay. White for Eli. There we are. Okay, so yes, we're going to be creating this with just a fork today. Okay. You could use a paintbrush if you wanted, but it's fun to challenge and use just a fork. So. I like it because then these are just items we have around in our house. And we don't have to go get a bunch of um, stuff from the store. We can just say, we have plastic forks in our house. Let's, let's use them. All right, so we're going to get black and white paint. That's all that we need. It's normal acrylic paint. Normal acrylic okay. paint. All right, now come on up here, Eli. Are you and I going to both try yes. this, Eli? Okay. Okay, so first you're going to take it, put your sleeves up, make sure they're nice and safe from the paint. <laughs> and then dip right into the paint. Just the tip or the so whole thing? You're going to dip the back side like this. Okay. And it doesn't matter what color? Uh, no, we're going to go with white for the circle, but black for the ears. So you can start with either color. Okay. And you're just going to make a big circle with your fork and just keep bouncing up and down. Oh, bounce like this? Yes. And then it's gonna give it kind of that furry look oh, of I like get what you're hair texture. And do we redip our fork or does it matter? Yes, you're gonna wanna keep going keep back dipping. and just keep dipping. Just keep dipping. And if you make it big enough, oh. you can have like this big, nice circle. You do not have to fill in everything. It's just about kind of getting a circle in there. You can go different directions on it and just fill it in so it kind of looks like that hairy look of a panda. Yes, it's so easy. I love arts and crafts time. Okay, now what do we do with the black? And do we clean our fork first? So if you if you want to clean your fork, you can, but this is such just a basic craft that it's great to just, just dive go for right it. in. Okay, yep. what are we doing with the black? Now add some ears of the black. Do the same thing, just bouncing around and just getting those two little ears, just having fun with it. And... This is a time when we don't have to be perfect. We can just just enjoy be the process. Eli's kind of got like a he's doing all the tines the same direction. I've been a little more messy, but either way looks cute. Yes, I I am loving them both. And then, okay, I'm going to show you guys the finished product that you can shoot for. Okay. So, you see you just got the fun designs on here. Mm -hmm. You can finish off oh. by using this side or just the tine of your fork 
to add in extra details once your paint is dry. You can add a body up to you. Just kind of have fun with it. You can do a whole panda or just the head. I do love this technique. It does make it look like it's like fuzzy and cozy. And Eli, whose is better, mine or yours? What do we think? I think yours. Yours kind of like Yours is like more Mickey creative. <laughs> mine is Mickey Mouse. I like it. Mine is Mickey Mouse. Okay, we're also going to use straws to make fireworks. Yes, and toilet paper rolls, actually. Okay. So. Here is for you, okay. Amy, and here is for you, Eli. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut a uh, toilet paper roll that's empty or a straw, just a little bit of maybe like a half inch down, and then you guys are gonna push that down push so that it's down. open just like this, like a flower. Cute. So both of you spread yours out nice and big. Okay. And now we need to get you guys some paint to dip in to get your fireworks. And you're using a toothbrush for the paint? So I used a toothbrush to create the background of this particular painting. And if you look at the last segment that we did together where we painted pine trees, you can see how to use the toothbrush to get this spackled look. Okay. Um, and then you guys are gonna use these to create your fireworks on top. So, oh, this is like our stencil? Yes. Okay, okay. You're just going to jump right in with the paint and you can bounce it all around in one color. You can pick a couple colors and then just put it down on the paper. There's a few options that you can do. You can go just once down and just keep that firework or you can kind of bounce it all around and get uh, like a Amy, mixture sorry, of fireworks. Wait, you go for it. Oh, so we're going to get big ones this size and then Eli's making the smaller Yes. Miniature ones. Miniature ones, yes. He has better vocabulary than I do. <laughs> nice. And you'll notice with the two different, like you really can do just a single shot. Will you do just a single one so we can see it on the camera? Sure. Yeah, just like that. So you can get two different options with it where you can do just this cluster look or a very simple basic look and it's totally up to you what you're liking, what you're enjoying. Oh my gosh, that is fun. And then if we pull this out, of course, it's fun to add some extra glitter at the end and make it a very special firework painting for our Chinese New Year. Okay, that is so fun. We have about 60 seconds for a quick last project Ooh. to show us. Okay. And this is lanterns. Yes. So we're going to use the toilet paper rolls again. And this time, uh, when we stamp it, you're going to use it either as a square by bending it, like flatten it, mm -hmm. or by um, keeping it totally circle and just dipping it in. Same so, thing, just dip it in the paint. Yes, cool. Okay. Still from I'll be here. the square one, Eli. You be circle, maybe? Kay. And I'm just making this, this just shape. Yes. Okay. And then from there, once you get your shape down, you're gonna take a paintbrush and pull that paint in to the center. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just pulling it into the middle so that it fills in some of that color inside of it. Okay, and this is just going to be the outside of our lantern. Uh, is that right? Yes. Okay. And then I like to use some different shapes to give it little smaller looks underneath. And, ooh, let me just throw that glue stick <laughs> on the floor. You are gonna be messy. That's right, so then from there, after it dries, you can add some extra details. <gasps> With how beautiful markers, glitter, all sorts of stuff. This like was that. the shape from the toilet paper roll. This is you use the cap of a glue stick. Yes. Okay, and then just embellish with some other paint and glitter, of course. Of course, you have to have glitter. glitter makes everything better. Yes. <laughs> okay, Eli, what's your favorite project of the three? Ooh, my favorite project would probably be the panda. The panda, just a little creativity, a little bit yes, more. Yes, I like it. Okay, well, thanks for helping us today, Eli. Thank you for showing us with these fun crafts. Yes. Chinese New Year, something fun, new for us to celebrate that we might not be doing. Yes. Thanks, Emily.